Hey, Steve. How are you, man? Good to good, see good. you. Uh, Hiram just... Wait, is that, is that Mark from uh, Battle of the Planets? It is. Very, oh. Very good. I, I, wish we were, I wish we were doing this at my, at, from my home. I've got a great, uh, a great one. I'll send you a picture. Yes. Um, also, yeah. half the reason I keep those there is because I figure at some point, someone I speak to is going to be like, that's great IP that has not been done. We yeah. should make that. <laughs> I, I hope that happens. I hope yep. that happens. But anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. so um, I think you're in an interesting position that I believe if you probably um, can make whatever you want to make next. But if you could get the financing to make anything you want, what would you mm -hmm. make and why? Oh, my God. Steve, we're starting with that question? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> jumping right into the deep end. Um, do you mean like IP or just? Yeah, it's anything. like more like the dream project. Like maybe you have a script in the desk that like no one has ever paid for. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the like you know, it's like an excuse yeah. to talk about yeah. something you've always wanted to make. Sure. Uh, well, I wrote uh, I wrote a draft of um, of a role playing game that I loved as a kid called Rifts R A F T S uh, as a Palladium game, and uh, it's probably the best script I've ever written. And uh, and I don't think it'll ever be made, but if I could make anything, if I could wave a magic wand, that would be uh, Kevin Zimbeda's uh, riffs, R-A-F-T-S. You know, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's a, a perfect excuse to, you know, air that script. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, for sure, man. Uh, if someone has never seen anything that you've directed, what's the thing you want them starting with? Oh, God. Um, I don't know. I think Red Notice. I think it's my best film. Okay. Um, uh, before I jump into Red Notice, um, you are attached to The Division, uh, yeah. which is something that I am, I mean, it's been talked about for forever. Do you think it's actually getting made anytime soon? I do, actually. Uh, I love The Division. I, I'm a huge fan. I play it every Tuesday night with three buddies of mine, like a, like a bowling league. We've been playing for, I don't know, seven, eight years now, uh, from Division One through Division Two. And uh, yeah, I, I think I, I think we have a very good chance of getting it made. Um, we just uh, just finished our second draft, uh, uh, and I'm about to uh, do my my pass on the script. I haven't had a chance to write on it because I've been making this movie. Uh, so uh, I'm hopeful that uh, I'll do my pass on the on the draft, and then we'll go make it this year. It's it's my it's my next movie as far as I'm concerned. Right, and that's what I wanted to know. I know that that has to be a priority project for Netflix. Yeah. Um, have they made that clear to you? Like, please, we really want to make this next year. <laughs> uh, they haven't quite said it like that, but, uh, but, but, you know, uh, we've been focused on, on red notice, but it's definitely something that they're excited about and we're excited about. What do you, my last thing on it, what do you think yeah. it is, uh, about the material that will make it, a, like a cool movie? Well, I mean, I, 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 what I love about the division, the game itself, is yes, it's it's super fun to play. It's a cover-based co-op shooter, but the part that I love most about it is, and this might sound a little corny, but but when you're on these missions in the game, uh, you're there to restore power, to get electricity running, to get people food and water. Um, so you're there to help, right? You're you're there in service of, and I think that. Um, that the division has a has a great heart at its center, the, the core concept of that game, uh, and it asks a very very simple question: uh, What do we owe each other in a society? Uh, what does one person owe to another? Uh, when the chips are down and things look at their worst, are you are you a self selfish person or are you a selfless person? Um, and and how do we rise? together, if, if at all. And there's a lot of powerful themes there. I'm really excited to explore. So I think the ultimately, um, the heart of that of the movie, um, the heroism uh, of the movie is what is what's going to uh, drive it. If I'm not mistaken, Red Notice was originally set up at Universal. Um, mm -hmm. And then it went to Netflix. Was there mm -hmm. any point that you're like, oh, maybe this isn't going to get made? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I always think that, Steve. I always go like, gosh, we're never going to make this thing uh, until we're actually shooting. Um, maybe it's just sort of the, the sort of um, cynic in me, I suppose. But, uh, but I, you know, it was never a lack of belief in, in the idea or the, or, or, the, or the script, frankly, or, or the, the elements. 
Um, but you always, you know, when you're dealing with a film at this scale with these big stars, it's always tricky, you know, and these things fall apart very easily. Everybody's very busy. You know, it's a, it's certainly a large investment and, um, yeah, it can be really tricky. There's, there's no, you know, I think it's a miracle when any movie gets made. I, I've heard that from every single director. Yeah. Is there an element of the fact that it's coming out on Netflix? Is there an element that you sort of like, I'm glad I don't have to worry about what the weekend box office numbers are, you know, oh, like, absolutely. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's my first Netflix film and, um, and not having the opening weekend box office and the tracking that leads up to it hanging over your head is, um, it's, it's just the most lovely thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I have a. I'm gonna go out there on a ledge and say this will be the number one movie on the number one thing on Netflix once it premieres. I don't know where I'm getting that data from, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm confident in this uh, in this guesswork. Oh, thank uh, you, Steve. I hope so. I hope so. Like that's that's what we came here to do. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's no doubt. Um, how did you come up with the idea for the MacGuffin? Oh, uh, thank you for using the phrase, and uh, thank you for asking. Well, well, um, yeah, I, I wanted uh, I, I wanted something that had a, a little bit of history to it, a little bit of mystery to it, and um, and I, uh, you know, I couldn't find anything that I that I liked. I wanted to have make sure there were three of them for each each in an act, and. Um, and I couldn't quite find anything, and so I made it up. Um, and I and I love. Uh, uh, I was a classics minor uh, in college, and I've always been fascinated, uh, you know, uh, uh, by Egypt and, and Egyptology and all of that. Uh, and certainly the 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 Mark Anthony, Julius Caesar, Cleopatra love triangle, which I thought sort of interesting. And um, and so I just kind of wedged this MacGuffin into actual history. And what was really fun, Steve, is when I was pitching. Uh, the idea, I would go through and I would talk about Cleopatra's eggs as though they were real. And, <laughs> and so often people would be like, oh yeah, 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 right, Cleopatra's eggs. Uh, and then at the end of the pitch, I'd be like, oh, by the way, that was all bullshit and I made it up. And they would go, ah, oh! but it was fun. It was fun to, to see them believe it. Well, but, but the thing is like with ancient Egypt, it, this could be real. Sure. You know, it's not, it's not so far-fetched, especially with the, you know, with everything that went on anyway, that's, you know. Um, yeah. So I want to switch to something else. Was there, did you have to pull Ryan and Dwayne aside multiple times and say, listen, guys, we're only going to use your liquor once in the movie. So pick a spot. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's a good question. Uh, you know, it was something that, uh, that I thought would be a fun little, uh, I suppose, Easter egg uh, for, for fans of Ryan and Dwayne. Uh, and I tried to, I tried to put it in uh, the film in a, in a, a subtle or classy way. Um, and, uh, but, but I did promise that I would, that I, you know, you couldn't do one without the other. You can't, you're not going to put Dwayne's in and not Ryan's or vice versa. So uh, fair play across the board. Since no one is recording this and no one is watching, uh, <laughs> which do you think tastes better? <laughs> oh God. I, you know, I think they are both disgusting. I would not touch, touch them. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Wait, I was going to really be drink. like, "Wow, that yeah, is I'm great." Kidding, Steve. I, I don't really drink, so I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. Um, but uh, yeah, I wish I had a better answer. I, I don't, I don't drink. Um, one of the things is, uh, I'm, I'm curious about this. So you write your script, mm -hmm. you get your cast, you, you know, you go out to cast, and everyone's excited, they want to do it. But every person I've spoken to tells me that once cast signs on, then you're doing those rewrites to accommodate for the actors that you have assembled for your movie. So I'm curious, how did the script change from what you envisioned once Dwayne, Ryan, and Gall, you know, signed on? Sure. Well, Dwayne was on from the jump. Uh, I, I pitched him first and he's like, I love it. I'm in. So I was always writing with him in mind and having made two movies with him before. Uh, there, you know, I mean, there's always tweaks and changes and moments, but it was largely what it is. Um, for Gal, uh, I, I, you know, in my little notebook, as I'm working through the ideas uh, for Red Notice, I she was the only name I had and I, you know, circled it twice and, and I flew to London to pitch her the idea and I pitched it to her and she uh, said yes and she was in and then I wrote the script and, and Ryan was the only person I wanted for the, for the role and so I had his voice in my ear as I was writing and I you know, did my best to approximate it um, and then we sent him the script he's the only person we sent the script to he said yes the next day and we were off and running now as uh, you know it's a very smart question of course as you go you know the 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 actors have ideas and thoughts they have to play the character typically they're they're really good you know sometimes they're you know they're just 
different. Um, and, and I've learned to kind of embrace those and try to find out, you know, what's the note behind the note? What are they trying to accomplish? And I try to do my best to, to, to do that while still serving the film uh, as, a, as a whole. Uh, one thing on Gal's character in the original pitch, uh, it was much a much smaller uh, part. Um, not, not, you know, it wasn't that she wasn't in it, but it was just she was more hidden throughout. Um, it was a much bigger reveal. And, you, uh, and, and as I was writing it, I just felt like, oh, gosh, we can't, we can't have Gal Gadot in this movie and, and not have her in this movie. And so I, we ended up writing uh, more and more scenes for her. And I'm so glad we did to really balance it. Um, did Netflix ask, one of the things about streaming is you can basically release any runtime that you want. I mean, the movie could be an hour and a half, it could be two and a half hours. Yeah. Did they ask for a two hour movie or how did you get to that runtime? No, there was no, no discussion even once of, of runtime. Uh, I, I'm somebody who uh, likes to keep it tight and light, fast and funny. Uh, so there's never really any, um, any concerns about length or pace is maybe what you're talking about. Um, so, you know, typically with a comedy, you're under two hours anyways, this has more action than a straight comedy. So I think, you know, hour 45, hour 55, you know, you're still, you're still, um, still in good stead. Uh, I couldn't imagine a two hour and 15 minute version of this movie. When you get in the edit, when you got in the editing room, what was your first, like, what was your director's cut length? Or like, did you have a version that was 220 and you're like oh shit how are we going to get this down no uh, you know i think the first director's cut um was i want to say the director's cut the editor's assembly was two and a half then the director's cut was 210 if i'm remembering um and even that director's cut i mean it wasn't even director's cut it was my like my first cut was like 210 and then my process is i you know i show it to very you know trusted friends uh, uh, and allies and I, and I keep honing and keep, keep, uh, uh, trimming and cutting. And, um, we were under two hours really, really quickly, um, and kept, kept going from there. I think if I was left alone long enough in an editing room, the film would end up being about 38 minutes long. <laughs> um, how many, what was the last thing that you cut out of the movie before you picture locked and why? Uh, we cut out what the three, uh, our three heroes are uh, are off to steal at the Louvre. Oh, that's interesting. You decided to leave that for your imagination. Yes, sir. Um, did you, were there a lot of other deleted scenes or was it just the trimming of fat in between scenes? It was mostly the trimming of fat, um, uh, you know, or, or, you know, fat, essentially anything not, not needed. Uh, it was so strange. Red Notice, uh, we had, I don't know, maybe three little seamlets that didn't that that don't that didn't make the final cut which is i think the the least amount i've ever had in anything i've made um so it was, it was mostly just about tightening and trimming and keeping it keeping the pace up did you at any point because right now obviously with marvel movies and with even some of the other movies some other movies people have been doing a lot of after the credit scenes and you know or putting in bloopers during the credits or doing other stuff during the credits was there ever any, did you ever think about, do we want to do something during the credits? Uh, we, you know, a little bit, not, not fully. Uh, There's never an idea of doing a tag at the end of the credits. Uh, you know, we thought about maybe doing some outtakes, but, um, you know, when I looked at it, it just didn't feel right to me. And I've done it before. I did it on Miller's and I did it on Central Intelligence. And I, I love, you know, look, I, I love outtakes or, or bloopers at the end. Uh, Cannonball Run, probably the high watermark for that. Uh, invented it, I think. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, it was never real, really in consideration. I don't think the tone of this film would, would suit that. Uh, you're on set filming this. Uh, which is the sequence that you regretted writing because it was such a pain in the ass to pull off? <laughs> oh, man. Let me, let me think. Um, God, there's one that's so specific and I'm blanking on it. You know, uh, oh, it's just a small one. We wouldn't even notice it. Um, I'll pick a different one. Um, I, you know, I would say, I would say it was the, the bull ring was actually a, a, a real pain in the ass um, and took forever. Um, and and uh, when I'm there, I'm like, oh man, you know, I could just cut to the train. We don't need this. Um, but, um, but it ends up uh, being really fun in the movie. 
One of the things that Ryan is obviously exceptional at is delivering lines like only Ryan can. Um, in the movie, there's the line, is this farm to table? Uh, look for the box that says MacGuffin. Um, are those things that you scripted, is, are these things that Ryan is coming up with in the moment? Oh, sure. Uh, well, on those specific ones, farm to table, all Ryan MacGuffin was me. Um, but I think, you know, I think on balance, I would say 90% of what's in the film uh, was written and, and a healthy 10% was, was improv. And, um, and Ryan is just great with that. And that 10% makes all the difference, right? Like those, those great moments, he's just so gifted um, uh, at doing that. And uh, I've been such a fan for so long that, you know, whenever Ryan was like, oh, I could, maybe I could say this, most of the time I just die laughing and say, let's go. Um, uh, Cause I get all the credit at the end anyway, Steve. So I, 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 I don't care. <laughs> right, hundred um, percent. When in the third act, uh, in the vault, if you will, Ryan is whistling the Indiana Jones theme. <laughs> is that in the script? Was that something he came up with? And how much of a pain in the ass was it to actually get permission to put it in the movie? God, this is such a smart question. I know nobody else is going to ask me that. That's that's um, that's why I love you. Um, so, well, it's something I came up with uh, on the day. Uh, I pitched it to Ryan. Uh, and he's like, oh, that's great. Let's do it. And then he's like, wait a minute, can we do that? I'm like, let's just do it. We'll figure it out later. Um, and so we did it. And then, um, uh, and then we called up, uh, essentially John Williams and, and, uh, and, and the rights holders and, uh, and, and they've never done it before. Uh, and, and, but, but they did it this time. Uh, they allowed us to use it. It was really generous of them. I was going to say, what is it like making that phone call? Because if they say no, it's a great bit that's just gone. I know, right? So you're just crossing your fingers and you know, squeeze your eyes shut tight, and you just hope, 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 hope they they say yes. And um, my uh, music supervisor, Gabe Hilfer, is um, is is uh, is relentless, and he's very convincing, and uh, and he makes the call. So basically, like if they said no to Gabe, then I would have called, I would have written a letter, I would have camped out in front of you know Stephen's house. Uh, uh, and you know, cause you just, you don't want to lose a little bit of magic like that. Um, so it would have been a long, hard fight before it would have, we wouldn't have done it. I think, uh, talk a little bit about crafting the third act sequence in the mind, because obviously there's a little bit of, I mean, you have the, the, the Raider, the Indiana Jones theme and the, the, the vault is a little bit of a nod towards, in my opinion, you know, the Raiders vault. Um, yeah, just obviously. Um, yep. so talk, talk a little bit about crafting that sequence. Because it's not only is it a huge sequence, but you're filming it during a pandemic and it's all being done in Atlanta. And yeah. that yeah, there it, has was, to be it was a real challenge. I mean, certainly like I grew up in the Bay Area in the you know uh, mid 80s and uh, early 90s. So, uh, you know, my entire childhood was invented by Steven Spielberg and George Lucas. So for me, uh, Raiders uh, is on the Mount Rushmore of, of, of movies. Um, and so certainly a nod to that, no surprise. Um, and I think, you know, shooting in Atlanta, uh, all of this stuff in Atlanta was a real challenge. Uh, for the mine shaft sequence, we actually went to uh, a mine in, in Northern Atlanta uh, that was, a, I think, a limestone uh, mine. And we were 400 feet underground uh, and shot uh, almost all of that sequence there. Uh, so we literally were underground for two weeks shooting it. And then we shot, of course, all the movie stars um, on, on stage. And then you, you, you put it together. Um, and it was, it was, you know, you have a storyboards. I, first I write it, then we storyboard it, then we pre-visit, um, and then you go shoot it. Uh, and then you realize, oh no, this doesn't work, that doesn't work. And then you start cutting it out and cutting it down and finding what works and, you know, doing a, a, a couple little quick pickup shots to help stitch a couple uh, pieces together. And then you have a sequence. When you are writing your, let, let's use the third act as an example of the, the mind, uh, the, the, the whole action set piece. When you're writing the script, how descriptive are you in the scripting phase of writing out this action set piece? And how much is it on the page, massive mind shaft, you know, action set piece in suits? Sure. Yeah, 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 Atlanta Burns. Um, right. Yeah, no, it's, it's um, I, when I write an action sequence, I, I try to, um, it's, it's a communication tool, right? So I'm trying to uh, evoke a feeling uh, of the sequence. I try to make sure that I'm writing the key elements of story that happen within the sequence uh, so that we're revealing character and plot. And then 
Um, and, and then I, I'm sort of a little looser in terms of uh, tone, like, you know, it's a, a big, uh, you know, a big chase ensues uh, as they jockey for position, da 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 But then you kind of get into specific beats that you need to tell your story. And from that, uh, I go to storyboards and I work with the storyboard artists as we kind of, you know, uh, step through the, the entire sequence. And then he or she will come up with, you know, pitches, oh, what if it does this? What if it does that? And you add those in. And then we have a, had a great um, uh, previous uh, company uh, called Third Floor. And they, they take that and, they, and then they plus it up and they bring their ideas in. And some you like, some you don't. Um, and then you bring it to your stunt uh, coordinator and he looks at it and then he adds or, or, or takes away, he or she rather. And, um, and, and, and it's like that. So it's, it's a layer cake of, of creative and idea as you progress. And then, and then you have to find the location. And sometimes you can't shoot the thing that you wanted at the location because there's not this particular thing. And then you have to invent something new. So it's, it's, a, it's a long, long, complicated, delightful process. So do you, you're just finishing up. Do you yeah. actually know what you're going to do next or besides taking a few weeks to just like disappear? Yeah, I'd really like to take a break. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, this has been a long haul. This has been the most challenging film I've ever made. I think it's the best film I've ever made, like I said earlier. Um, but it really, especially with, the, with uh, the, the global pandemic that struck right in the middle of our shoot and shut us down for six months. So this has been a long haul for everybody. Um, and uh, what I really want to do, just on a personal note, is uh, to um, just take a little time off, rest, spend some time with my family, uh, recuperate, uh, re-energize, and then and then saddle back up. But but uh, yeah, the next next thing on the docket for me is the division, I, and I can't wait. On that note, I got to stop. I'm just going to say congrats, um, and you me. already know this is going to be a huge hit. So uh, I, you're very kind. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed, and I'm going to send you. I'm going to I'm going to send you a picture of uh, of my uh, of, of my mark. Uh, oh no, dude! You totally, you 100% should. I know the I eggs are cool and everything because it has to do with the movie, but you can't go wrong with like you know stuff like that. Yeah. Let's go. You know, you, by the way, I'm telling you, it needs to get made, dude. I'm I'm available. Tech avail. I'm unemployed. Great. I gotta go. Uh, I'll talk to you soon, man. Congrats. Steve, you're the best.